Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Steelers Nation Unite Huddle. Happy Friday. I'm Misty Matthews. Pleased to be joined today by Steelers tight end Vance McDonald, who is at Heinz Field. Vance, thanks so much for taking some time to answer fan questions. Could you kind of just take us inside Heinz Field and what it has been like so far for the team? Yeah, for sure. We, um, of course, everyone is sad to sort of end the uh, the long marriage there at St. Vincent over in Latrobe. Um, including, you know, many fans and stuff. But it's something that, uh, you know, this organization was certainly used to. And um, there was a certain way, a uh, certain level of comfort that, you know, we had going into camp, you know, everything is. So it's been new for everyone, including us. And um, obviously with within those lines, like there's, there's certain things that we have to work through. And that's, you know, proximity, location and meetings, you know, and COVID enhances all of that. So, a little bit of a learning curve, um, players, coaches, staff, and uh, we are doing our best. But I got to say, it's it's pretty cool, um, you know, to do your uh, training camp work day at Heinz Field and, uh, you know, right in the middle of Pittsburgh. So that there are some uh, there are some some pros and cons of it all. But obviously, we miss the uh, the live, you know, interaction and things with the fans and stuff like that. And I know, of course, they're all missing it, too. So. It's interesting, for sure, to say the least. All right. Well, we have a lot of fans here on the huddle. And just a friendly reminder, if you want to ask Vance a question, please press star three to go through the screening process. Vance, we have a ton of them in right now, so we're going to take some of them live. We also have some online questions as well. Our first one is from Tyson. Tyson, you are now live, so go ahead and ask Vance your question, please. Hey, Vance, big fan, man. Love that stiff arm against Chris in Tampa Bay. Um, but I just wanted to ask you, man, now with Ben back and also with the addition of Eric Ebron, how has the camaraderie been between you guys and how are you guys working to build your relationship to be successful this next season? Yeah, for sure. Um, so this is going my fourth year being at the field. And, um, you know, Ben's had obviously a ton of success uh at his position he's been doing it for a long time and i gotta say i've never seen seven is kind of what we refer to him as. i've never seen seven uh like this and like this meaning like he has a fire under him and he is so hungry to not only get the season season rolling but uh to just win it all and um it's been so cool to see that um Obviously, it's been cool, you know, looking back on it now, um, you know, obviously it was horrible having him, him out last year, but it has been so cool to see the transition to, you know, fighting through the elbow injury, having surgery in the off season, you know, seeing him, talking to him through that, and then now seeing him out there, you know, a couple of days here in the camp, and he is rifling the ball around, and it is it is amazing to have that, you know, that seven, that, and I had, you know, I'd heard of, I'd seen when I first got here and to have him back. It's been so cool. Um, and then with Eric, I know a lot of Eric, uh, obviously doing, watching a lot of film on him and stuff and, you know, appreciating uh, what he brings to the tight end position in the, in the league in the last seven years that I've been around. And so, um, yeah, it's been really neat to have him here. I, I didn't know a whole lot about him and his personality and stuff, but it's so funny. We've been getting along and just joking and cracking up and stuff. But running him, catching him up to speed, um, obviously allowing him to get as much uh, with Ben as he possibly can to just build that um, that relationship because he's he's going to come in and he's going to do really big things for the offense this year. And I'm I'm really excited uh, at the direction we're headed again. And it's all at the helm of Ben and how hungry he is. All right, Vance, our next question is from Trevor in Washington. Trevor, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Vance your question, please. How you doing, Vance? Uh, hey, uh, with uh, Matt Kennedy coming on to you guys' uh, offense there, I was wondering uh, how much more you guys are going to be doing uh, motion and play action this year. Yeah, that's, um, that's definitely something I know uh, – we had moved away from in the past a lot of play action. And I know, I know just had just, you know, listening to the history of sort of the offense and stuff. I know that was, that was a big thing. That was a big part of Ben's success. I know, you know, especially early in his career. And um, 
it's been really neat to have Coach Canada come in because, uh, just like you said, I, I think the way the game is evolving, you see a lot of offenses now moving towards that. Man, if we can beat you pre-snap, why not? And so um, you see a lot of communication that's having to happen on the defensive side of the ball. And when one guy is not on the same page, man, that's that's uh, opportunity offense. And so having Coach Canada here introducing that that to us and a uh, mixing that into what we have been running in the past it's been it's been new you know definitely for everyone but um i think it's going to be a really great marriage uh you know mixing some of his philosophy in with some of the old school stuff that ben and the guys that have you know, been around for a while you know randy um and what we've been doing around it it's going to be a great it's going to be a great marriage of offense i think we're going to i think we're going to see a lot of really great things out of it too coming into the year all right, Vance, I do want to get to an online question. Uh, this is from Maureen. She is in Castle Rock. She wants to know how farm life has been treating you and your family so far. And maybe for some of our fans who are not familiar, you guys made a, a pretty big purchase last year. Yeah, so we uh, we went off the grid. And um, my wife and I have always like loved the idea of having sort of like a homestead. So it has been fantastic. Missy and I were chatting a little bit before we started and um we have 14 chickens we have a dairy cow jersey dairy cow and um we're about to add a mule to the mix to uh give her some company and we uh also are looking into possibly getting some sheep here in there in the future after football but um man it's amazing we have a couple of acres of produce planted so cool to walk out and see corn growing um my watermelon just poked through a couple of weeks ago and uh, got a couple bulbs there, and I'm excited to, to crack open some watermelon here in the fall and late summer. And uh, so it's been uh, definitely a learning curve. I did not grow up on a farm. My wife did not grow up on a farm. But we have embraced it with open arms, and it is amazing to just be able to go outside and appreciate and enjoy the beauty of nature. It's so relaxing. So uh, it's so just puts you at peace and um, man, we, we love it. And the idea of doing it too, is we have a, we have a foundation that we're, we're launching. And so we're going to utilize that space and host Christian leaders. So even more excited about what the use of it is going to be for, but man, we've, we've enjoyed farm life to the fullest so far in our first year. So looking for many more years to come too. All right, our next question is a live one. This is from Jeremiah. You are now live. Go ahead and ask the answer question, please. Hey, Vance. How you doing, bud? Hey, uh, What's up, Jeremiah? Quick question. Yeah, quick question for you. Hey, and congratulations on that farm. I just bought myself a farm in Pueblo, Colorado myself, 40 acres. But uh, off that question, how did you keep yourself focused and everything with COVID-19 and keep, keep your training? What all did you do on your one-on-one -on -one trainings for yourself? Yeah, it was uh obviously I'm I've always I've always just gone into the facility, at, you know, whether I was in San Francisco and then now here and utilize, you know, all the resources that are available for guys. Um, you know, different guys have uh you know, their different uh approaches to the off season. Some guys go off and train, et cetera. But um for me it's really important and for my wife too, it, it just to be at home to, you know, to enjoy the kids while they're young for everything. And so I have to be able to do everything, you know, in certain proximity and not being able to go into the facility was definitely a curveball I wasn't expecting. Uh, you know, I think things sort of went crazy, uh, like that first week of March, um, you know, things started rolling out, mandates, this and that. And, uh, you know, for a while there, I'm, in my eighth year, I'm still at a point where I'm doing low, low, low intensity, um, you know, training. And so it wasn't terrible at first. And then as we started to roll through March, yeah, there was a point there uh, where I remember finding myself just like, um, well, I guess I'm going to have to sort of figure this thing out. And so fortunately for us, we have, we have a lot of open space and um, it's interesting because like I would find myself doing certain things uh, but outside, like in nature. So, for example, I got a lot of land. I got a lot of timber. Like, I would literally just go out and cut down, you know, trees and logs that would fall down, and I'd find myself literally deadlifting them, then squatting them, and then pressing them and launching them down a hill. 
only later to go down and start cutting firewood. So there's like a lot of fun things that I, I ended up doing. Um, and again, it's just like, it's exploration for me simply just because like it's the first year on the farm. Um, aside from that too, as I started to get closer to, uh, I guess, quote unquote, the launch of the off season, um, before we knew it was going to be digital, I was doing a lot of specific position work. And again, that's just something that I've been playing the game long enough. I know what I need. I know what muscle memory things that I need to touch on in order to maintain, um, again, just those, those movements that I'm doing repeatedly during the season. So again, I have plenty of space to do that. I have at this point accumulated ladders, et cetera, resistance bands that I can use, um, to do those movements. So it was definitely weird because I'm used to being in a facility, but at the same time, like I said, I embraced it because it just meant more time for me on the farm. All right, we do have a poll question for everyone here today on the huddle. We want to know, how are you following Steelers training camp this season? If you are following along on Steelers.com, please press 1. If you follow along on the Steelers social media channels, press 2. Press 3 if you use the Steelers mobile app. And press 4 if you use other news sites to gather your information. Back to questions for Vance. Vance, our next person's name is Tom, and Tom, you are now live, so go ahead and ask Vance your question, please. Hey, Vance. Hey, Missy. How you doing? I'm well, man. What's up? Nothing. I'm here with my 13-year-old boy, Luke, uh, who plays football as well, um, but obviously this pandemic has really uh, done a, a number on youth sports. Um, you guys will probably play. I mean, it's it's you know they'll figure it out, but for the youth, it's supposed to be fun, and now it's not fun. What what advice can you give the youth out there to keep it real so next year they still want to play? You know, it's it's a lot different, you know, for the pro versus the, you know, the the, the youth athlete. What advice do you have for like my son and and other youth athletes out there? Yeah, that's. Uh... That's definitely a good question, man. That's a lot of uh, that's a lot to chew on. But um, I I think you sort of hit it on the head. Like it's, man, when you're that young, like developing is one thing, but it's it's even it actually even applies to NFL players. If you don't have the passion to do something, man, you you're not going to wake up every day and attack that. Uh, you know, attack that objective, attack that goal. Uh, you're not going to approach it with the intensity or the emotion or the the effort that that you know requires you to excel at it. Like if if it's not fun, man, there's really not there's not any point in doing it. And you know, you can kind of find guys too that you know get to a certain point in their career where you can just tell like it's just the passion has run out. And if the same thing applies for kids. You know, young. It's one thing to develop. It's another thing, man, to just keep that perspective that it's supposed to be fun. Man, you're supposed to have fun even when you lose. You know, maybe not in the moment, but at the same time, it's that it's that looking back and the, the memories that you build. Um, you know, like I've lost a lot of games, but to look back and and to call you know my career, you know, you know, just take college for example, to call my college career a failure simply because we had way more losing seasons than winning seasons at Rice, like. You can't approach it that way. And so for kids, man, for youth, I know, I think this is correct. In the state of Pennsylvania, I think they canceled all youth sports, all high school sports. And, um, I mean, obviously no one is prepared for that, you know, when it's announced. But at the same time, now it is our reality. And so, obviously, the measures that, that you know, go into making sure that everyone remains safe is one thing. But, at the same time, like we can't lose, we can't allow COVID to take away the joy, um, not only about just being active, but just about being around each other. You know, we can't necessarily go out and play organized sports, but that doesn't mean that we can't get together and just still enjoy, you know, just the activity. Um, I don't, you know, a pickup basketball game or, you know, going around and throwing, you know, football or baseball or, and I mean, God, God forbid, I don't think anyone's running like an open quarter in track just for fun. But if you do, if you do want to do that, then I mean, by all means, uh, you won't find me doing that. But um, joking aside, I mean, like, seriously, like we, you can't lose the joy um, in just being around, being around each other. You can't lose the joy and the fun, that perspective of, uh, of remembering like, 
why are we doing this? Well, we're doing this because we enjoy it. And so while things certainly have had a wrench thrown in them, um, I don't I, I don't think that we can lose that perspective because when we do, man, I, I again, like, then why are we doing it? So it's important, I think, to keep that perspective. I'm kind of talking in circles, but it's a good question. No worries, Vance. Okay, our next question is from Mike. He is down in Texas. Mike, you are now live. Go ahead and ask Vance your question. All right. Um, I know for years that the Steelers, and yes, I'm supposed to be a Cowboys fan, and I'm not. I know for years that the Steelers did tight end, would use the tight end to score. Do you think that this year the tight end is going to become more important other than just a blocking individual? Do you think they're actually going to have the ability to score? I think, um, I mean, we've seen this sort of, uh, you know, surge of just tight end usability. I mean, we're the tight end in general has evolved so much just even since I've been in the NFL. And, and to say that I've been in the NFL for, for a long time, you know, on paper, yeah, sure, compared to the average person. But looking at the NFL globally, you know, since, you know, decades and decades, like the tight end has just, it's become just this ever-evolving position where it really depends on the philosophy of the offense and so um obviously i think every organization i think kind of wants uh a body more or less to sort of be that receiver type threat tight end but at the same time i i i just love you know trying to pride myself on being uh versatile in the in the way that man, I can go out and put my hand in the dirt and I can block guys that are bigger and stronger than me. At the same time, I can run just almost as fast as guys who are way, way, way uh, louder than me. And so, um, you know, I think this year, again, like, and not to make excuses or anything, but it's really tough when, you know, Ben goes down and we have to have, you know, a young, inexperienced quarterback, uh, Mason and, and Duck, come in and try to put something together. Um, again, you're talking about pressure. You're talking about so many variables um, that you're you're trying to control. And again, whenever you're trying to control so many things, again, it, something when when Ben's out there, that's you're just kind of on, on idle pilot for a lot of things because you've already built camaraderie, you've already built communication, you've already built uh, this relationship where you know what to expect. And so, with all these things, you know, the coordinator. I mean, there's so many things on a plate. There's so many things in a given week that you have to look at and zoom out and look at. And so I think with Ben back this year, obviously it's going to be completely different than last year. Um, I think, too, with the addition of Eric Ebron, uh, I certainly think that with the skill set that he brings to the position, it'll be really, really fun to watch him. Um, and, again, too, like that that only helps me. That only helps guys like Juju, uh, James Washington, Deontay. And so – it's just, I think it's going to be really fun. You know, it's always fun whenever you add something on offense um, that you didn't have, you know, the year before. Um, not necessarily because you you didn't hit goals that you wanted, but, you know, which we didn't. But I'm just saying it's just always fun to sort of get like a new, not a new toy, but just like a new a, a new weapon. And so with Eric, I, I think, like I said earlier, it'll be fun to see where we head in terms of production on offense. All right, we have time for just a few more questions for Vance so we can get him going. We uh, Another online question, Vance, this one is from Heather. She's in Carlisle. She wants to know if you tried anything new during quarantine. I try anything new during quarantine? Um, I mean, golly, yeah, on the phone, we did so many new things. Um, I guess, but they're farm-specific. Like, I've never milked a cow before in my life, and now – well, I was. I was milking her twice a day. Um, I've never grown really anything on a mass scale, which I am also doing now. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of something that's less farm specific. <laughs> that's let me, okay. Let's give five seconds. Let me think five seconds. Okay. I can, nothing's coming to me. I'm sorry. That's a, nothing is that's coming okay. to me. That's all right. Let's go to the next question. Uh, Jonah is in New Jersey. You are now live. Go ahead and ask Vance your question, please. Hi, Vance. I'm 12 years old, and I was wondering 
Who do you think the Steelers' biggest threat this year in the league is? Man, um, I think uh, I think this team for two reasons. Number one, um, simply because they've. I mean, they've really always been successful in the recent years, um, and that's the Ravens. But number two, um, our approach to them every single year uh, since, you know, because of their success, but it's always a difficult one simply because we have to play them twice a year. And so, you know, you can approach the Ravens, you know, outside of a division differently every single time than when compared to us just because again you you learn you almost try to learn the heartbeat of the team you you learn tendencies so well you learn um you know the profile of players so well you know for me the way a guy rushes uh you know watching the weight of his hand you know from a defensive end you know his stance you're looking at coverages i'm watching safeties i'm watching their rotation i can i i'm picking up on their calls even during the game so there's like there's so many nuances that you can find against a division opponent, um, and not to not to blow over you know Cincinnati or Cleveland, but I just think within a division, those games are always harder. No matter what division you're in, those games are always harder simply because you just have all of those nuances. You have all of those, um, you know, you're playing them twice a year, and so just the level of detail that goes into those opponents is just so much more and it makes the biggest difference so I would definitely say within the division 100%. All right Vance well we want to thank you so much for taking your time out today after uh, practice being at Heinz Field and really getting Steelers camp going and thank you so much to all of our fans for joining us here today on the Steelers Nation Unite Huddle we hope to continue doing these throughout camp so Vance any final words before we uh, let you get back to it? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, talking football um, and really just life in general. I, I, you know, it's been a crazy year. A lot of people, you know, we were just talking about this the other day in a small group, but um, a lot of people are getting to the point where they kind of roll their eyes um, and say things like, oh, you know, it's, it's 2020. Uh, and I want to remind people that um, – and encourage them to not allow that to be sort of an excuse for complacency, um, you know, to say something went wrong. Oh, well, it's just, you know, it's 2020, this and that. Well, I just don't, I don't want us to lose our joy. You know, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but ultimately I just, I don't want, you know, people in general to just head down that road where, You know, you're just expecting the worst out of every circumstance or expecting the worst out of every situation because there's so much, there's so much around us that is good. And so when you, when you deal with something as, as, you know, big as COVID, um, it can certainly lead us there. You know, when you stack things up like that, you know, you, you look at the riots, you look at the political climate of America, you look at. You know, we talk about, you know, racial tensions, especially in the NFL, because we have this platform in order to make a huge difference in that arena. And it, it has been for the last few years. Um, and you can zoom, you can look at anything. And it just seems like, man, 2020 sure is just explosive. It sure is negative. But I don't my, – my message is an encouraging one. It's one to just kind of look at yourself in the mirror and just think, okay, how can I fill myself up with joy today? How can I approach the day – on a positive one, how can I combat all the negative that we're seeing with something positive? So I would just say, try to be the light. Try to take COVID, you know, whatever circumstance you're in, I think COVID is always in the back of everyone's picture, but try to take that picture of negativity, maybe that is trying to, you know, be jammed down your throat, whether you're watching the news or anything like that, and let's try to work together on making it a good one. Let's try to be the light. That's my, uh, that's my farewell. All right, fans. Well, thanks again so much. Thanks again to our fans. This was a lot of fun. That's going to do it for this edition of The Huddle presented by Steelers Nation Unite. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Happy Friday and have a great weekend.